that. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Triangle Pen Show of 2023. We'll get our live stream started here in just a minute. Just kind of letting uh, people join before we start uh, before we start wandering around the show here today. I'm going to get my finger off the trigger of this thing so I can not mess it up. We're going to try the gimbal again today. So if it gets weird, I will just stop using the gimbal and I'll use my handheld thing. But we'll see how it goes. I think I've got the kinks ironed out. So we'll see. We'll try it again. Uh, welcome in, folks. Welcome in. We'll uh, flip around here. We are in a new location this year. This is the Double Tree by Hilton in Research Triangle Park, North Carolina. We're in the Raleigh area, although I think we're technically in Durham, but the lines get a little weird around here. So RTP, Research, Research Triangle, Triangle Park, is a place everybody knows in this area. Uh, we have a pretty nice uh, like hangout area for after the show here at the, uh, the bar, and there's like a big lobby back over this way. And as I flip the camera around, Oops, I'm only going to poke it once this time. There we go. There's actually a nice big outside seating area. I don't know if this is actually available for us to use, but it may well be. So that's kind of cool for those of uh, the people who are here for the weekend or just hanging out after the show uh, tonight or uh, tomorrow night. All right. So when you come into the hotel, you'll see some signs that will direct you toward the Fountain Pin Show, and you'll find this sign, which is a little bit small, but we could, <laughs> but uh, you know, it tells you where to go. And there's a whole bunch of pens in here. So the way it's arranged this year is we have uh, sort of a, a lobby area here that has some tables and there are two small-ish, well, I guess uh, one smallish and one kind of medium-sized ballroom. So it's a little bit different than it was before. We're in a new location, as I said. And so, um, you know, we'll kind of be uh, wandering around. So let's get going. As you come into the show, you'll find the registration table here with... Uh, uh, Terry and whoever else is manning the show today. Hey, all right, how are you doing? Well, well. So you'll want to pay here for your admission. It is uh, $10 per day or it is $15 for the weekend, which is a really uh, reasonable sort of price. There are door prizes and that sort of thing for folks who are coming in here. We got things... Oh yeah, totally. Yep. Yeah. So there will be some pens available from um, from Pilot. They have some of the Ishime pens available, as also as well as one of the uh, Franklin Kristoff, Arushi, and Maquier pens as door prizes for the various days, as well as uh, at least one from Kenro and some other things as well. So uh, first fifty log, we get a prize. Oh man, I got to get a prize. All right, and then uh, you are in the pen show proper. It has uh, died down a little bit, but uh, you know we had a fair number of people coming through today. So let's kind of, um, I think we're going to go uh, anti-clockwise today. We'll start over here with uh, Rich from River City, right there. And uh, he has a whole bunch of handmade pens here on the table here today. I'll kind of give you a, a look at what we've got going on here on the racks. Lots of color, lots of sparkle. Big pens, small pens, some with woods. Um, let's scoot around this fella right here with the <laughs> with the fun shirt. Uh, also has some uh, very nice nib holders here, and these will work with any of your dip pen nibs, kakamori nibs, all that jazz. You can even just like shove a Yovo nib in there and use that as a dip nib if you like. So lots of variation uh, there. Hey, how's it going? Doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Just showing people around the pen show. You know how I do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, there are also, of course. Uh, fun animal pen rests here. Right there. The battery power on Mike's phone must be great. Uh, the battery power is fine. We'll make it. <laughs> All right. So, actually has two tables here. I'll show you what's on the other table. So, these are a shorter version of those other uh, nib holders I was showing you before. Some longer ones, some more full size pens including some nice some ones with nice roll stops in here as well, like this little butterfly. So several different sizes and shapes here at River City Pens. You can find them right there, rivercitypencompany.com. If you can't make it to the show, if you can make it to the show, he's the first table. You can't miss him, he's right there. <laughs> See you later, Rich. And moving on down here, we have more pens. Hey, how's it going, Barry? So we've got uh, some pens for cigar aficionados. 
or I guess cigars for pen aficionados, depending on which way you're going. And here. All right, through here. What do you have to show us? Ones that operate like this, like the gun, yep. or like the old wishing well. Oh, that's fun. I haven't seen that mechanism before. Like that. And it's got the watch parts on it. And then I do one in circuit boards, like that. Right on. Then we've got these. These are all watch parts, and this is the original one that won the Reader's Choice Award from Pen World Magazine. Oh, very cool. And you still have it. Oh, oh yeah. Well, no, no, no. This is, I've made quite oh, a good. few of them good. since then. Here's my Dragon Eye pen. Yeah. Just follows you around the room. That's good. Oh, yeah. And dragon scales are hard to come by now. Yeah, they're getting dear. Yeah. Yes, they are. You don't just find them lying, lying around anymore. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> You can find, uh, let's see, here we go. I found your card. You can find those here. There's the URL in the bottom left corner there. bgartforms.com for Barry Gross. Oh, it's hard to do a QR code off a of screen, so, yeah. Thanks, Barry. We'll take care. Uh, also, books on learning to turn pens, some nice pen cases. 60 pen to display case, 129 bucks. There you go. All right. Then we have the prize cauldron. If you'd like to enter to win one of those door prizes I was showing you at the beginning, you just throw stuff in the prize cauldron and hopefully they pull your name out later on. Then we have some uh, vintage pens and these sorts of things here. This is from Rob's table. Does not have an online presence that I know of. But lots of uh, Parkers, Schaefer's, all manner of interesting things here. Lots of vintage at the show this year, which is nice. Hey, how's it going? Just showing people around the show. Uh, and there's a doorway here, but I'm going to swing past uh, Kenro here and then go in the door. So we have Kenro Industries up next. We got their giant banner for their Fer Ferris Wheel Press and Estabrook collaboration. That's, you know, I. This banner has been here the whole time, and I haven't even noticed it. It's yeah, I don't know. I, it's pretty. It's pretty awesome. That space cat and the space duck, especially, are very good. So you can find all kinds of uh, good stuff from the Kenro folks here, including uh, Y Studio things, leather goods, often prototypes and one-offs and those sorts of things. Montegrappas, Oto Hoot. Over in here. Aurora, this way. Pen cases, of course, including these fun little tie-up ones with the little dividers inside. All manner of Esterbrook in here. These are tropical pens for summer. Or perhaps a frog to hold your notebook down. Or a turtle. <laughs> Uh, Carrie wants to show us something. I don't know. You got something to show us, Carrie? Yeah, uh, it's uh... Yeah, What do you got? This is the official Ferris Wheel Press Esterbrook collaboration. The Nebulous Plume. The box is beautiful, amazing box. <laughs> While I have everybody. Hours of work. Yeah. What? 800 hours of design work. It's crazy. So inside, if when you get one, it comes. In, this box comes in this bag. For everyone that wants to collect them, like I do, so this is from head nerd to everyone out there, do not put this box inside of here. It will stick. So they gave us these bags to put over it so you can save everything. Wow. That being said. Yeah, yeah, let's get to this pen here. Let's get to the pen. Box. Oh, is this a leather box? Oh, that's why it sticks. I see. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got the magnetic closure. The story inside. Right here. This is the uh, Nebulous Plume ink, which is a um, glitter also. Mm -hmm. Not glitter. Shimmer. Glitter. Shimmer. Thank you. Terrible. He said he was a pen nerd. I don't do shimmer inks, <clears throat> but I love this ink. And for me, for someone who doesn't use shimmer, <laughs> no, for someone who doesn't use shimmer, I let it sit. Shimmer sits on the bottom, and I draw up the ink. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous yep. shading. So the pen, Nebulous Plume. This is a blended oil slick 
from Tim McKenzie's Diamond Cast Company. And you see here we have the ring in the middle, the trim ring, which is actually on the body of the pen. And this was done in wax casting to make oh, this. Right on. You notice too, the nib is also engraved, mm -hmm. Ferris wheel. There's also another trim ring at the bottom here at the base of the cap. And we engraved the center of the clip as well. Nice. And these pens look extremely good in person. They are, uh, diamond cast a lot of times you have to catch a lot of light and also like some movement to show how good it is. These are really beautiful pens. So, really cool. That's a... I mean, the match. Uh, yeah. Amazing. No, it's a great collaboration. Yeah, we were super excited. So, we'll have more pictures and stuff coming out. Um, we actually had seen them uh, again at Scriptus to finalize everything last year in October. So, we were there during their Halloween dress-up day inside Ferris Wheel Press, which we were never allowed to talk about. But now I can talk about it. So we have pictures of Brian and I with the entire team from Ferris Wheel. Yeah. Um, what did y'all dress up as? We didn't dress up because we didn't know. So we just came in as New Yorkers and, you know, we tried to kill our accents, of course. Uh -huh. <laughs> Speak as loyal as possible. Right. Yeah, but, tell them about how you're walking here and uh, things like that. Now I got the coffee going. What are you doing? All right? Yeah, yeah. No, but it was really, <laughs> it was such a great experience because, you know, sometimes you do collaborations from afar, and this was really up close and personal. You know, we got to hang out with the team. We saw them again uh, at Paper World in Germany uh, and got to have dinner with Jimmy and... Jimmy and... Yeah. Wow, when they watch this. They're watching and they're going to be very sad. Oh, man. Jimmy and Ray. Jimmy and Ray. And it was just great because it was a collaboration where you actually got to engage with the company. And, you know, when you see stuff like this, you understand what it really takes to do this kind of artwork, meet the people behind the scenes. And, uh, you know, it's not like when you go to a pen show and you get to see the Estabrook guys and hear all the details all the time. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anyways. Super excited. Yeah, I mean, I gotta, I'm gonna get close to this duck again because this, this is my favorite part, uh, honestly. This is it's just kind of like stuffed down in a corner. I mean, you have the the fountain pen rocket ship, very good. Oh yeah, they're a Canadian sure. company. Uh huh. A little Ferris wheel press bottles for the uh, the planets there. The satellites are pens. This is this is good. This is good. That duck that duck deserves its own pen. Maybe an ink. Needs something. Uh -oh, oh, no way. There's a shirt version? How about a t-shirt? That's rad. Very nice. Large? Uh, extra. Extra? Yeah. Alright. I'll come, I'll come back and find it though. I gotta... It's not a duck, but it's a cat. Hey, that's awesome. Cool. <laughs> uh, there's Paul. You can't trust this guy. How uh, <laughs> do? He wandered away from the table. Let's go into the main ballroom here. <laughs> So this is the main ballroom, I suppose I should say, for this pin show. It's uh, a bit larger than the other one, which we'll see here in a bit. Right here. And when you have it sort of in two ballrooms and a, and a lobby, it makes the show look a little bit smaller, but I don't think it's much smaller uh, than it has been in the past. Although it is a fairly smallish show, usually a pretty compact affair here in uh, Raleigh. Uh, here, just inside the door, we have the Narwhal Navalure folks with some really cool pens on the table. A couple of these are brand new. These are the, uh, the ink series that I did reviews for not too long ago. And uh, you'll recognize a couple of these pens from reviews I've done. And then these are, um, what's the, the new version here? Yeah, you wanna tell us about these? The Horizon, uh, The Horizon, yeah. Yes. So this is Daniel, he's uh, manning the table here. These are the new Horizon pens. You see they have that sort of wavy cap band there that exposes the ink window. These are really nice looking pens, and actually I like this silver and black one a lot in person. I thought it was going to have to be this uh, tropical colored one, but the silver and black is really, really pretty cool. Uh, older pens there. Ladies to Miami color over here. Yeah. This one, uh, is, is it called the Miami? Yes, yes. We got the color design inspired by the sunshine over, over the beach. Yeah. Uh, there we go, thanks. Well, okay, cool. So this is the new Miami Nautilus, and this is a Jonathan Brooks resin, which is actually kind of awesome. It's arresting. So it's in with these uh, ebonites, and then you see this one popping in the middle. I've seen several people stop and go, what's this? I have to have it. So uh, there are 500 of these, and uh, they should be available now. So find those at your favorite Narwhal dealer. But really, pretty great looking. 
So I <laughs> didn't want to back up into anybody there. So that one's very cool. Of course, the Pride one, you can find that review on uh, uh, Fig Boots' channel. He managed to snag one. They were all sold out before I could get a hold of them. Uh, then we have, next up, we have Frank here with some Omos to show us. What do you have for us, Frank? We have uh, two editions already on sale, which uh, one is the Israel 75 edition made from the old stock celluloid here, uh, the Blue Rahoya, and also the nib is uh, Seven has a stamp. Kind of oh, yeah. Let's get a little bit of light on it. There yeah. we go. Uh, Nip has the 75 uh, engraving on it. This is actually a coincidence. We acquire a bunch of uh, old nibs, and in the process, we find 75 of the 75th anniversary of Moss Nib. Really? And, uh, 75 of the 75th anniversary? Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. And uh, we made this pen and we put the 75 nib on it, which is a good occasion and uh, good for us to use this nib. Yeah, very yeah. cool. And this is one, and the other one is the launch edition we did in, back in February. And uh, this is uh, the one we did uh, like as a comeback. And the uh, same uh, uh, old stock silhouette from Omas. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one is also on sale. Yeah. And uh, uh, upcoming, we have uh, three more in the more affordable range. And um, <laughs> it's a more faithful like a, a recreate of Omas, and uh, this is the Ojiba model, and uh, we're going to release probably later this month, and uh, this is going to feature the exact the same dimension of Ojiba as they used to produce from the blueprint we have, and also we're going to put, we're going to make the, let me show you, uh, a tester pen, um, the Omas is uh, making uh, the, the signature nib again in 14 karat gold, and also the signature Apronite feeder. Uh, only thing we did improve on this pen is the piston filler, so we uh, use a different structure and uh, solid brass, uh, no more breaking on the old mass piston. It felt really solid when I was playing with it earlier. It's a nice feeling piston. Very nice. And those will be available, you said, later this month, likely? Yes, and uh, we're going to go around uh, 360 about uh, with a 14 karat gold nib and uh, piston filler. Great. Omos, yes. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. So Omas has uh, kind of come back, and Frank is running that show, I believe, and he's got some really cool pens. I was a little dubious about those Omas, but riding with the new nib was actually really nice. Uh, next up, we have uh, the pen connoisseur, Deb Kenny. You don't get Deb at very many shows, but we do get Deb here at the Triangle Show. Uh, and also DC, Deb usually will, well, sometimes we'll be able to make it out too. So if you uh, are in the area and coming to the show, Deb is an excellent nib grinder and don't pass this up. She has done great nibs for me and a bunch of my friends actually. So uh, as well as all kinds of fun things on her table, including uh, pen holders made by her mom, parts, modern pens, all sorts of things, some inks, restored stuff, ground things. Deb does really good work, so check her out. Do you have a, do you do things online? Do you do a, like mail order? I do a lot. Do you have a web, ad a web address I can send people to? Uh, email address. Okay, I'll grab your email address and put it on the video. Thanks, all right, take care. Uh, then moving around here, we have Franklin Kristoff. They have this end of the ballroom here. So, starting down here, Audrey was really tempted to put herself down here, but she didn't want to crowd Deb while they were both doing nib work. So she has uh, the testers down here, or rather, Franklin Christoph has the testers down here with all of their nibs in steel and gold, including SIG nibs and uh, grinds by Nagahara, etc. Some ink in the house because we did, they didn't have to travel, so they could just bring some ink from the, from the factory. And we've got uh, leather goods and not quite leather goods from uh, Franklin Christoph here. Oh, these, uh, these gray pads back here are actually very good. I really like the paper in these spirals. Uh, I've been using it quite a lot for notes and that sort of thing. You'll see here we got like some of the NWF stuff, which is natural wood fiber. It's like a, I don't know, it kind of wears like leather, but it doesn't, it's not quite as heavy as it, uh, but it's very stiff. I've had some of these pen holders for years and they've reacted really well. Uh, this bright orange one here is a, uh, some Italian leather, and it smells amazing, which <laughs> as soon as I looked at it, Scott saw me, and he's like, hey, pick that up and smell it. And I did, and it smells like olive oil. It's really pretty. So, yeah, the penvelopes are very good. <laughs> I have a bunch of those on my shelf for sure. Uh, and these larger ones are excellent as well. Uh, they have some of the small notebook uh, holders here. They sold out of all the X-Pack ones. I actually... 
Uh, I saw one of the X-Pac ones briefly and then it was gone. So I think those might be toast, but uh, these little notebook holders are pretty great. And of course, color prototypes in all kinds of varieties, including a new small pencil, which I don't know the name of. I think it might be called the Pocket 90, but this is a uh, smaller pencil that is, uh, you know, as you can see there, com compared to the uh, Model 90 lead holder. It's, uh, it's a, quite a lot smaller, but it's also like the smaller LEDs, the 0.5s and 0.7 type things. Uh, and then we have here some 65s in various configurations. You see there's like, I think that one in the middle is called like Sex and Candy or something like that. This sort of uh, beige and red one is pretty cool. I actually don't have a 65. I might have to grab one of those one of these days. We have some 50s here, or rather uh, 55s. Some 45s, 45 longs. I think this might be a 45 extra long. It has a little medallion on the bottom. This one uh, to the left of the swirly pink and purple one is really beautiful. And I don't think I can catch, oh, there's a little bit of that. Like it's like a bronzy kind of almost pinkish shimmer in there. I think that's really cool. If nobody picks that up this weekend, I might have to. We got some model 50s. Some 46 XLs, I believe those are, including one that's very close to the colors of my very first custom pen with Franklin Kristoff. And some 46s. 31s, 65s, 66s. Twenties and pocket twenties. Some 19s including the most Franklin Kristoff pen, I think, there, with the white, gray, and black 19. Got some Model 2s, Model 3s, Modified 3s. I can't believe this swirly, uh, like, one with the olive in there is still there. I saw that this morning. Went, Ooh, that's good. Panther 40s, all sorts of stuff here. <laughs> My, uh... Better half, my beautiful wife Audrey is over here doing nibs all day. He's trying out a nib right now, so I don't want to interrupt. We've got uh, some engraved ones here. This is a newish thing that they've been doing. We've got some leaves, we've got some dolphins, some stars, shamrocks, etc. in there. And you can see she's, she's working over there. We'll just, like, we'll just watch Audrey creepily here for a second. There she goes. And uh, Scott and Dustin behind the table, find these guys. And uh, also Paul, but he has wandered away. I, we saw him earlier. We saw him earlier. So there we go. All right. And then down here we have all sorts of things. This is Howard Levy, founder of Bexley. You may be familiar with them. He's got a whole bunch of stuff here on the table to look through. All manner of vintage things, mostly pen trays, some paper, there we go, and uh, Martin's Pens 51, Martin is missing at the moment, he must have wandered off, but if you need some pen repairs done, Martin is one of two of the repair people here, we've also got the Kennedys at another table, but uh, he does a lot of repair here at the show, he is a pretty excellent repair guy, and just a good dude all around, also selling uh, some, like, parts bins over here if you need to put some pins together or if you need parts for something those are here as well empty boxes for holding your pens some displays oh look at this interesting parker display do i need a parker display i don't know maybe then uh, some modern stuff some vanishing points some vintage things of course all restored by martin some fancy vanishing points under glass less difficult to find ones outside the glass this uh, two-tone purple on purple, really cool and not seen very often. Some uh, Ellie Crimsons from 2017. That was quite a while ago. Oh, uh, there's one of the Ellie Gioche ones, uh, Gioche ones. That was my first Ellie, and uh, still my favorite. I think. Love that thing. All right, check out martinspins51.com for all that kind of stuff. Ink grab bags, five bucks? Well, I might have to check that out. I need to grab some pens, or some inks rather. 
<laughs> We've got Penrel, this is Kirk Spear and his wife Crystal here. He's doing uh, nib grinds and all that sort of thing right here. Looks like he's pulling nibs. She's cutting things. It's a whole operation over here. <laughs> they have, <laughs> hey, how's it going? You brought your daughter back, good, good. Did she find you something good? Great. Oh, Twisby, nice, nice. We were chatting earlier about that. All manner of uh, modern pins here from uh, Visconti's and Aurora's to uh, Twisby's, Sailor's, Pilot, all that jazz. There's some things here from Russ pins, some Mont Blancs there in the back. There's all kinds of good stuff at this show. More of these uh, narwhals, a little bit more light over on this end, so you might be able to see some of these narwhals a little bit better. There we go. Oh, look at that one, it's a very parody uh, narwhal there. Well, this is a Penrome exclusive, how about that? I missed the little tag in the front there the first time. It's cool looking, it's kind of, it might be a diamond cast, I haven't picked it up yet. Uh, and also some ink. I picked up the rest, I think, of the backpack inks. There might be, there might still be one I don't have, but I don't remember. I picked up, I think, the rest of the series. So I got some of those. Also some uh, bargainy things here. We have the uh, wow pens from Preppy with all the little designs on them. Have some platinum pens from Japan. Ackerman, all kinds of good stuff. And you can find him at penrealm.com. <laughs> and then we have all kinds of fun ephemera at this table. It's actually got quite the crowd in front of it, so I'm just gonna kinda do a little bit of an overhead shot, try to get some of this ephemera in here, including this beautiful Waterman case in the back. You see the Waterman fountain pen case there against the wall that's lit up? Uh, I think that's only like 450. And if I had a place for it, I would snap that up because it is like in pristine condition. Uh, maybe you also need a vest, I don't know. But then there's all kinds of fun things here. Oh, some sassy cats. I think I have to come back and get a, sna a sassy cat or two, probably. But all kinds of things. Let's kind of scoonch this way. <laughs> hey! And this end of the, the show is Jimmy Dolo's table. And Jimmy has kind of a little bit of everything on his table all the time. You never really know what you're going to find, but it's always going to be some cool stuff. A lot of modern things here scattered in, but also some like really hard to find collectible stuff and big ticket items like these emperors back here in the back. This is the new 743 Verdigree. I'm sure we'll see that on a couple of other tables in the house here, but uh, this is a really beautiful pen up close. Really like that thing. We have 845 custom Arushis. Lots of Mont Blanc just kind of hanging out here. We got the Marilyn Monroe pen here. There's also a JFK pen up in the case. Keeps those separated for obvious reasons. Uh, this is this is Jimmy himself right here. You'll find him in his monocle or his uh, magnifying glass hanging out here. Jimmy's always got good prices and really interesting hey. pens. Hey, how's it going, Jimmy? Doing pretty good. Busy. Good. Busy show. Which new little sailor pens? Oh, these are uh, Pro Gear Slim Minis. Pretty neat, yeah. It takes a converter too. It seems like it's too small for a converter, but it takes the converter. Very nice. Converter, little 14 karat gold nibs. Yeah. You got gray, blue, and sort of a brick red over there, huh? Yeah, neat. That's called buy me red. Uh huh. Uh huh. Why is it? Why is it called that? Huh? Why is it called that? To buy me. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always good stuff on Jimmy's table. He's a good dude to talk to. Just come by and say hi to Jimmy when you get to the show. <laughs> we got some uh, some more vintage over here. I believe this is from uh, yeah, Pen Attic here. It's from James Day. You can find him there if you're looking for any of the stuff you see on this table. Mostly uh, restored vintage. Got some really nice looking uh, stacked celluloids, vax. Some some nice stuff here. There's our friend. There's our friend Kevin. He's a good guy. He's been hanging around the show here. 
and we have the Kennedys over here. And the Kennedys actually have a lot of really useful stuff that um, you might just be tempted to walk past, but I urge you not to. Um, this uh, nice cube over here has all kinds of good things. So like, just for starters, if you know somebody who's just getting into fountain pens and you want to like, give them a really good cleaning kit, this is the ultimate pen flushing kit. And Audrey and I saw this earlier and I'm like, yeah, this is actually really good. It's got a pair of bulb syringes. It's got a couple of regular syringes with blunt needles. It's got some pen flush. All that stuff there, and 18 bucks doesn't seem too bad, especially with the pen flush and all that. It's all in one box, so it might be a nice little gift for somebody who's new to fountain pens. New workshops, uh, fountain pen smoothing kits and all that sort of thing. Gripper squares. We got some, um, some pen, uh, uh, pen wraps here made by <laughs> That's a Wrap. It's pretty fun. Uh, there's the pen flush there. You also have some emery boards and nib smoothing mylar. I actually don't have any mylar paper, although probably Audrey has some. I could just get it off of her. Uh, some forceps. Those are more useful than you might think. And uh, brass shims, which are, you don't see them too often, and they last a long time, but I'm going to go and grab some of those because you can never have too many, and mine are getting real bent. Uh, sack talc to keep your sacks from sticking to the plastic or anything or sticking to themselves and getting ruined. Some sack cement and shellac ink is out like all kinds of good stuff here including like little syringes yeah this is a don't don't miss that stuff at a show and this is a uh, michael linda kennedy they're good folks and they do really good repairs and grinds uh, definitely check them out if you get a chance uh if you need pens ground or repaired another good set of grinders we got uh, like three different folks doing grinds at this show so that's pretty great of course they do also sell pens modern and vintage restored all that jazz this is uh, Dave Rezatarski, or at least there's Dave Rezatarski. He's going to be giving a talk on uh, vanishing points tomorrow that I'm going to go to because nobody knows more about vanishing points than David, I think. And here we have uh, Alan Hirsch, this fellow right here with the fishing vest. And he's always got interesting stuff on his table from his accumulation over the years. These are uh, Parker Sonnets. Wow, look at this. $35 Parker Sonnets in silver and gold. How about that? i got to stop by this table more. He's always got cool things. And you can find him online at vintage, <laughs> vintpen at AOL.com. That is a real email address. Usually vintage stuff, but always some unusual things. No, 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 we can't hear you. It's cool. You're safe, probably, for the right price. Oh, hey. Hey, welcome from Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh, some more, uh, looks like mostly modern pens here. I'm not familiar, but uh, all kinds of things in these binders. And, hey, how's it going? we got uh, Paul Arano's tables here. And there's, there's Paul right there with his uh, orange hat on. If you're interested in joining the Black Pen Society, come talk to Paul at a show and tell him you like black pens. He'll give you a black pin to signify your love of black pens. And then there are just racks on racks of pens of all vintages here, as well as earrings and pins and cufflinks and who knows what else here on that side. Uh, a smattering of watches even. And then, you know, if you want to rifle through a bin of pens, you never know what you'll find in there. Those are always fun to rifle through. Some more modern things, some things in a case which are probably fancy. And then something that I keep looking at, even though I have, no, I would not, would I use this? I don't know, maybe. Look at this pencil sharpener here. I love this thing. You kind of clamp it in with that little bit and you can watch the pencil get sharpened through this little hole at the top. Just a super cool piece. And that little drawer collects all the shavings. Super fun. And then of course, vintage pencils and ephemera. A dollar buys a writing miracle, y'all, for one dollar. The new Scripto Super Dollar Ball Pen. Because ephemera is really fun. So you can find Paul Arano. Uh, let's see, does he have a card somewhere? Uh, maybe I'll remember to put his uh, stuff in the, uh, uh, in the description of the video later on. If I don't, remind me and I'll try to put it in there. All right, let's catch this middle aisle and then we can go check out the, uh, the other ballroom. So here's a private vendor selling things out of their collection, right there. Some watches. Hey, how's it going, Pat? Doing well, doing well. I may have picked up a couple of pins from Pat at the last show. 
It's always a dangerous table. You never know what you're going to find over here. There you go. Do you, have a, do you, sell, do you sell online, Pat? No, no. No, can't find him online. You've got to come to a show. This is uh, Jerry Berg. Jerry does uh, great vac repair repairs. Shoot for plunger fillers. Watch the plunger go down the tube. Fills up. Totally does. Jerry did some restoration on my grandma's uh, uh, plunger filler set a long time ago for me. Came out really beautiful. There you go. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, you can find all kinds of uh, specialty nibs here. You can find uh, re-tipped pens, restored pens. There's really good work on these uh, these Schaefer's. Really kind of known for the Schaefer's thing. We got David Silber here. You forgot it was pen show day. Oh no. There's uh, all kinds of things. Actually, David will have things that are modern, things that are vintage. You kind of have to look carefully at all these uh, these cases in order to see what all David's got, but he's always got good stuff. I don't know if he has an online shop or not, but he's really good here. Well, thanks very much, R. I don't really see the comments very much, so if I don't see the comments, don't worry. It's hard to pay attention to all the things at once. How's it going, Hirsch? How you doing? Howdy. <laughs> yep, Hirsch and Terry. Yeah. Showing some vintage pins and such. Can I see a card so people can know where to find you online? There's just really good repairs and all that sort of thing. Nice restored vintage whatnot. There we go. If I can. Uh, where is the URL? Oh, there you go. There's the email. Yeah, there's the email down there at the bottom of the card. This is the best place to get a hold of them. Or at a pin show, come see us. <laughs> Thanks, Hirsch. Hirsch and Terry are really nice. And this is, uh, this is Tom's table. He is the pen man. Uh, most Welcome to the Triangle Pen Show this year in Durham. And we have guests visiting with us today. Uh, this is the pen man's table. He has stepped away. I am his assistant, Rich Lappin. And uh, we are so glad that, Mike, you could be here and uh, report the proceedings. Two thumbs up for you. And enjoy the weekend. Will do. At this table, uh, Tom has all kinds of pelicans. Some of this is from his personal collection, and some of it is uh, more modern stuff because he has become a pelican dealer. He loved so much. He loved pelicans so much. He became a dealer. Also, platinums uh, and all that jazz. He has wandered away, but I'm sure we'll find him later on. Also, the platinum tester set is here at his table. If you want to try out all the platinum nibs from UEF up to music, all right there. You can find him there. Uh, and you can find, let's see. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I know. Tom's a local. I know that guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tom Bailey uh, used to be sort of in charge of our pen club and uh, many other things. Hey, Ulysses, how you doing, man? Doing great, bro. Ulysses is a really good dude. I see him at a couple of pin shows. Always oh, a nice guy to hang out with. He and his wife are lovely. So we're kind of moving out into the into the atrium again, and then we'll dive back in to the other uh, the other um, uh, what's it called ballroom. All right. So here we have uh, midnight pens. Doesn't have a URL here, but I bet if you Google midnight pens, you'll be able to find what they have. Looks like a smattering of uh, modern and vintage. Lots and lots of vintage at the show this year. Not a huge amount of modern, but you know, good representation. Oh, look at these, like interesting vintage sets here. Those are, those are really interesting. Knives and screwdrivers and all kinds of weird little things. And then a bunch of both modern and vintage pins here. And some roller balls, pencils, ring tops. All manner of things. <laughs> and then, of course, at the center of the table apparently is Nakaya. I didn't even notice these before when I was walking through. Uh, this 
Here's a beautiful uh, decapod twist. Really neat. Yes. And of course, you always have to have the miscellaneous bins. Those are very important at a pen show. All right. Then, let's go on in here. Uh, we do have... Oh, there we go. We do have an auction at this pen show, so if you're able to come out to the Triangle Pen Show, uh, stick around for the auction if you like, Saturday evening at 8 p.m. It'll be uh, down the hall here, pretty easy to find. You can come and like see all the stuff uh, that will be up for auction. Most of it's out now, but they're just kind of like adding things as they go. Vintage and modern, all kinds of things at the auction. Uh, this wall here is Crazy Allen's Emporium. Looks like he emptied out the entire shop in here. Liz is doing a dance for us. Uh, I think that uh, Crazy Allen there like uh, requires all of his employees to do a dance. Uh, so, yep, there we go. Good. He's he's breaking into it as well. Love it. Nice. <laughs> I don't know what they're putting in the water here, but uh, so you'll find. Hello everybody, welcome to the home show of Crazy Allen. We are honored to be here, and it's a new location, and everybody should show up tomorrow or Sunday. You guys, wait till you see this collection of. 70s and 80s pilot pens. So he's got all kinds of good stuff here from uh, stuff you'll like never see. There is a lot of stuff here that you don't see very often, for sure, or maybe ever. So, like, for example, some really interesting Pilot Custom 74s, like this sort of uh, metallic matte color here, as well as a mini. It's like a it's a Pilot Custom 74 Slim or some weird thing there in Burgundy. I've never seen one of those before. There's a faceted sort of like I don't know, kind of charcoaly but it, it's lighter in the middle. I don't, it's very interesting. All kinds of weird stuff on these trays right now. So come check these out. I see a few things have gone missing since the last time I was here. So it looks like they have been selling, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think there are some stargazers and such in here. Also some really nice like lined uh, pilot customs and uh, this one's an engraved silver one kind of just hanging out over here in the front. A lot of really interesting stuff in these trays. I haven't even rifled through them all yet. And then, of course, the modern stuff, including uh, Lamy's and pilots of all descriptions. There's a verdigree, a little bit better lighting, perhaps, over here for this beautiful verdigree pen. 823s, of course, always a banger. The SE pens. This uh, Arushid uh, Emperor here with the swirls. I don't even know what that's called, but it looks cool. 845s. 845s in the Vermilion used to be really hard to find, and now I'm like seeing them on so many tables, and I'm like, mm, do I like that? Yes. I'm glad more people are getting those because they're rad. It took me a while to find one after I missed one at a pin show years ago. It's always a pleasure. That's why you just gotta buy it. When you see it and you want it, just buy it. Don't even, don't argue with yourself. So the story with that one was that I saw it at the Drum Ghouls table at DC while I was doing the live stream, and I said, hey, Michael, save that for me. I want it. And he went, yeah, cool. But he thought I was kidding and sold it immediately after I left. And so I was like, no. But also, like, my pocket uh, was happy then. I tracked one down later. It's cool. I got a great one now. But look, sometimes you miss stuff, and it's not all your fault. <laughs> hey, what's up, Jackie? Doing well. Doing a little live stream. You know how I do. This is, this is Jackie. She's causing a ruckus. You might see her as one dog night every once in a while on the streams or uh, online. This is also, this is Liz. Uh, Liz, no pen intended, on the, inter uh, uh, the interwebs of all kinds. Yeah, all the interwebs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She says she's going to start doing some more reviews. She, she's let it slide, but now she's like, now I'm going to do some more reviews. And now I've put, it on, put her on blast, so she's going to get back in there. Get back in the game. Yeah. It's great there's so many local pen reviewers here in the North Carolina area. Uh, Liz and I are here local. Fig Boot's pretty local to us. So uh, you also find a whole bunch of paper here. Crazy Ellen's able to just empty out the store. You see he's not too far down the road from where we are here, at least for a little while. All kinds of good ink down here as well, including some really great sailor stuff. Also, hey, how's it going? I caught you just daydreaming. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> so come find them at Crazy Islands Emporium. They are in Chapel Hill. They aren't really online, but uh, if you come to Chapel Hill, they are the only store around. So definitely worth checking in there, at least for a while. At least for a while. And then we have on this wall, Pilot right here. There we go. Missing one of the crew, but 
Here we go, the pilot things. Right here. Pilot doesn't sell at the show, but if you find something you like, they can sell you something through a vendor, perhaps. So definitely come over here and try out a bunch of pens. If there's a pen you want to get your hands on and it's a pilot, come here. Including these beautiful 912s that I very recently uh, had on my channel and will continue to have videos for on my channel. They've been dipped and tested. They're ready for you to try out. Custom 74s, this new 743s, 823s. If you want to get your hands on some shimmies. Uh, if you only take one home thing, one thing, one thing you saw today, no object would be. I don't know yet. Um, I don't know. I, I just don't know. There's too many good things. Uh, it might be one of these pilots here, though, because some of these pilots, like, I don't know, I could use the Namiki Emperor or a, a, a Custom Rushi or something. That'd be pretty amazing. But then there are the Yukaris. And I don't know. Maybe price is no object. Maybe Yukari has to come home with me because. I mean, look at the maquillage work on these Yukaris. Just, just bonkers good. And also, aside from being a, a really nice art object, they are wonderful to use. I had one on loan from a friend of mine a while ago, and it was surprisingly amazing to use. Like, I was like, ah, it's just gonna be fine. But it's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> the gray, white, and black FC. I mean, that's one that's attainable for me, but something like a Yukari, not that obtainable. So I might have to go with something totally unobtainium if I had no, uh, no budget. Uh, this is Federalist Pen. They have this other wall over here. And they have, uh, as you can see, a lot, of, uh, a lot of modern pens. They are a modern pen vendor out of uh, the Philadelphia area. They have uh, all manner of pen holders, leather. There's Federalist Frank himself. <laughs> we have uh, all kinds of ink here. Probably the biggest selection of inks and such at the show. Then on this wall over here, we have uh, the legendary pencil company. This is John Vila. He's got uh, all kinds of awesome lead here. If you are a lead head, this is a good table for you to check out, including legendary pencils. Legendary pencils. Even more legendary now. What's even more legendary? Yeah. Uh, I figured out how to add gold and silver to my offerings. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Are these uh, lasered? Yeah. Start Even with laser and then go back and yeah, lots of nice experiments. There's a fair child. Yeah, make them even more legendary. There you go. All right, let me find a card here so I can give them your URLs here. I got it, just barely. There we go. Let's see if we can find a legendary. Yeah, legendarypencilcompany.com. Also, you can find uh, just all of, all of John's knowledge packed into books. He has bookified his uh, excellent pencil blog and information. Judges have spoken. It's one best nonfiction book and really runner up in the coffee table photography and specialty novelty categories. That's pretty great. Congratulations. Right on. So check out John Vealy's Legendary Pencils if you're into uh, pencil stuff. And then uh, this one that's all covered up is Nick Pang's uh, tables. He is teaching a class currently, so he is off and about. And then uh, lastly, Harold's bright idea of vintage and contemporary writing instruments, <laughs> implements, which is, uh, as it said, vintage and contemporary writing implements. Smattering of uh, contemporary stuff, lots of vintage, Mont Blancs, Watermans, Eversharps, Parkers, Estabrooks, all that jazz found right here. And uh, there's Harold himself with a bright idea, I assume. All right. And uh, that's. Uh, what That's are we? my name, uh -huh. and everybody called me Coney for years. I can see that. Yes. I can this see is, that. This, yes. This is how this works. It's my favorite nickname. <laughs> but uh, it's from I you mean, know Connecticut. All right, you re ready? Oh, this is the new uh, Coney Sailor. 
Yeah, you can find uh, a lot of close-ups and details about this on the uh, well-appointed desk site as well. She just got herself one of these. Uh, this is one of the line friends, uh, it's the rabbit of the line friends. Let's see that finial. Look at that. It's very cute. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this is the newest of the Lion Friends set. They had Brown and Sally last year, and this uh, this time we've got uh, we got Coney. All right. All right. <laughs> I think he's trying to uh, claim that he invented the question mark there. All right, folks. So that's uh, that's the Triangle Pin Show. Uh, we made it. We did all the we did all the things. And uh, there you go. Just finishing. Whew. What time is it? Uh, uh, almost uh, almost five. Okay. Cool. All right, so there you go. Uh, it didn't take as long as I was uh, thinking it might, so I guess I could have started at my normal time, but this way we didn't miss too many vendors. Oh, hey, there's a dollar super chat in there. Thanks very much. I appreciate that. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, that's the pin show. Uh, I'm going to go rest my arm for a bit, and uh, we'll be closing up here in about an hour. Thanks for asking me to live. Yeah, I, uh, I do definitely do that in big, crowded environments like this. Uh, does it have an ink window? Oh, what, the Comey? No, the Coney doesn't. It's a solid one. Uh, something about the gimbal, I kind of missed it here. Oh, the gimbal thing didn't freak out. No, I, uh, I, I managed to not freak out the gimbal thing this time. Yeah, we can do a little bit of Q&A. Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, I got a little bit of time. Let me put this on a table real quick. All right. So what you got if you're in there in the chat and want to know things? Let me uh, put my tripod. There we go. Let's see. Can I tilt this? There we are. Perfect. Oh, and I can put it on the table. Yeah, now we're good. So thanks very much for uh, for joining me. Sorry I missed uh, most of the chat probably while I was doing that. It's really tough to like manage the whole, manage all the stuff and also pay attention to chat. So I mostly kind of neglect the chat. So uh, my apologies. But you get me every Friday. So uh, the Pin Show Fridays. What's the after show like? Um, the after show here, I think would probably be pretty good. Um, there's a lot of nice space here, like all kinds of tables and like just lots of seating. This is a really good place for uh, for an after show. But we haven't had the show here before, so it's brand new. Do you need an invitation? No, you can just show up. It's coming in. Hey, Brian Chu, who wish you could be here. Uh, our window small stripes. Oh. Uh, so no, you can totally come on in um, and you can uh, yeah, just uh, hang out. If you see people playing with pens, just come on out. There's always after show activities. People hang out in the bar and restaurant areas and all the lounge areas and uh, like play with their pens, talk to people, show off you know what they got and like uh, let people test out pens. Like the after show is really like the people are always the best part of a pen show. I've been saying that for years and it remains true. So uh, yeah, if you get a chance to go to an after show situation at a pen show, yeah, stick around afterwards and uh, make a pen friend or 10. So that's, uh, you know, it's a good thing to do. Uh, is it common for the sections of Park 45 to crack easily? Bought two new old stock and after a week they're already cracks. Uh, yeah, it could be. Um, so, I mean, those are old pens, you know. Uh, after show pins after dark is the best part. Yeah, for sure. We're gonna do line dancing. I mean, look, you never know. It, uh, things happen. Uh, how long am I staying? When am I? S oh, so I. I mean, I'll be here all weekend for the show. But this is our local show, so we just drive home. Uh, today, Audrey and I are gonna drive home together. Tomorrow, I'm gonna bring my own car because I stick around for the um, uh, for the auction. And usually, I go out to dinner with somebody and uh, all that sort of thing. So. Um, we'll, uh, I'll be around uh, most of the day tomorrow and, you know, Sunday, so I'll be here the whole time. But we have to go home and feed the scraggly dog, so Audrey doesn't stay for the auction. But I usually do, because, I don't know, it's fun even if I don't buy stuff. Uh, what have I bought? I've really only gotten, um, I got a couple of inks from the backpack ink set that I don't think I had. Uh, and I also, not a high dollar purchase, but uh, I picked up my, uh, I picked up a Lamy Vista. Uh, was you like, oh, Mike, what are you getting a Lamy Vista for? Well, Lamy Vista was one of the first pens that I bought myself, I think, uh, back in the day, and uh, I ruined mine probably 10 years ago. Mm, yeah, about 10 years ago, I guess. I totally ruined mine. It had some ink that was, like, staining the, the cap, and so I'm like, well, you know, I know alcohol is a good solvent, and so I just, like, poured a little bit of rubbing alcohol in the cap, 
uh, and it started melting. So it got real cloudy and uh, it was on the way to just completely melting. Do not under any circumstances put rubbing alcohol in your, um, in your Lamy Vista because it will ruin it. So um, I got a brand new shiny clear one to uh, it's sort of like not replace but like go alongside that one. It is a great solvent. It solvents pens. <laughs> so um, yeah. So yep. Uh, so anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's what I've gotten so far. But there are several things here that I think are pretty darn cool. Melting like the Wicked Witch, it kind of does. Like if you look online, you can find pictures uh, where people have actually melted their vistas. So so I toss it? No, 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 I'm not gonna toss it. It still works fine. It just doesn't look good. It looks like I tried to ruin it. So, or, and this has been a suggestion to me before, I'll just go ahead and put some uh, alcohol on the body so that it matches. Uh, and then I'll have a matched foggy uh, cap and body. Because, you know, why not? So I went ahead and picked one of those up off of uh, Kirk's table because he had it in like the $15 pile. And I'm like, yeah, I'll pay 15 bucks for a Vista. For a Vista. Those are great. So yeah, that's all I've gotten so far. I don't think I'm gonna get that Waterman case. I, I mean, I might if I could think of a place to put it, but I just don't think I have a place to, to put it. If I had a store, I would absolutely buy it. So, you know, uh, I like visiting uh, your original pens from the hobby. Yeah, right? Uh, Lamy Charcoal Safari's very first pen. Nice. Um, a safari was actually Audrey's first pen too. She had um, got a turquoise one. It was her very first pen. Yeah. Uh, Franklin Christoph, Christoph pens were the nicest ones. They have some really beautiful pens for sure. They do good work over there. And of course, the nibs are going to be excellent. And I am not biased at all. Oh uh, yeah, they do good stuff over there. Do good stuff. Uh, and there's also like there's a bunch of uh, Mont Blanc at this show, which. I'm kind of tempted to get into some Mont Blanc. I've only got, I've got one and Audrey's got one. She has a Bohem and I have a, uh, I don't know, 200, uh, 220, two, I forget what the number is, but it's one of the numbered ones. It's not like a fancy one. Uh, you do have a store, well, it's online. I don't think I can justify a <laughs> display case. <laughs> but uh, there's some like 146s and 149s and stuff. And there is the auction tomorrow, which has some really nice things. So I'm kind of like, I'm kind of hang, hanging back and seeing what the auction's going to cost me because um, there's some interesting stuff at the auction that I'm, I'm looking for, so um, we'll see. Uh, but since I get to go to a lot of pin shows, I'm not usually, like, um, uh, I'm not going to be the person who, like, just first, like, grab stuff, you know? So, it'd be cool if Newton can make a cap for the Vista. Yeah, I think so, but, like, making slip caps and stuff for other people's pens has got to be real tough. I mean, they do, like, injection molding or something for those so that they can, you know, make them very specific. Uh, is the auction preview out? Yes, I think the auction preview is actually on the website. Um, I didn't see it on the website, but also I didn't look for it. But yeah, it's um, it's available up there on the website. I think they're all up. Yeah, so some vintage, uh, a bunch of modern. It's all out of, I think, one guy's collection that he's selling off. And uh, if I'm correct, the proceeds are all going to be donated to the uh, PCA, which is the Pen Collectors of America. And they do all kinds of programs for outreach and education and like kids programs and that sort of thing. An auction stream could be fun, but then it'd be hard for you to participate. Yeah, that's right. That's that's what's up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little timid. That'd be kind of fun, but I don't think I'm going to live stream it because, like, also I kind of want to buy stuff. And also it's fun to, like, just sit in the back and, like, kind of, like, uh, you know, uh, talk snidely with your friends. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's fun to do that kind of stuff. So, like the shirt? Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, thanks. I really like the shirt a lot. Got this one. Yeah, heckle. Yeah, you got to heckle softly. Yeah, yeah. There was a time in Chicago when some folks got pretty drunk and did some drunk, loud heckling, and that was uh, that was not great. But uh, a little bit of heckling, you know, quietly in the back is kind of fun. So, wore a dinosaur outfit. Yeah, we know somebody who wore a dinosaur outfit uh, to a, to a, uh, an auction. That is fun. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna do that. I would sweat my entire body weight off if I did that. Very nice to say, come sit by me. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you can join us in the back row, Ruth. <laughs> so, yeah. But I got a, I got a auction number two. I think is my paddle number. So if I buy stuff, I can also get out quickly because they do um, they do payments in order of um, uh, paddle number. So since I have an hour, or so, um, about I don't know, 45 minutes or so to drive home, I don't like to have a late number. So. Uh, Sonkin looks really good. There's really, there's some nice stuff. There's some like really nice Omos in that auction. Uh, there's some, uh, there's like some like various odds and ends of uh, modern stuff. There's a beautiful Bohem in there that a friend of mine's looking at. So, I even challenged in the Kakamori bullet nibs. Found that Tatsuya called comic nib holders fit and under 10 bucks. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, the nib holders are pretty neat. Um, River City pens, uh, Rich over there has been making some. But like any kind of dip nib holder, I think will actually hold those Kakamori nibs. He has some. Um, 
don't know if he brought any with him, but I might have to buy one. I don't have one yet, and I hear they're pretty cool. So I'm going to have to try that out. So there you go. All right, folks. Uh, it is a little bit after 5, and uh, I'm going to go rest my voice, I think. So thanks very much for hanging out with me today. I hope you had a great time. Moved back to North Carolina. recently missed it in the event. You haven't missed it yet. Come on out. Uh, we'll be here all weekend, so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, you can get in a Dell or Dip Nib for all. Yeah, right, for sure. For sure. So come on out. Come on out. Uh, yeah, and if you have any kind of Dip Nib holder, it'll pretty much hold it. Yeah. So, Rich Major Dip Nib holder. Love it. Great. Uh, you can smell smoking, I guess. Oh, yeah. You can't really see it, but you can't smell it here, but it definitely is a little bit hazy. It's not too bad. Uh, Speedballs don't fit. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting. Uh, anyway, all right, folks, I'm going to sign off. Thanks very much for visiting uh, with me. I hope that uh, you enjoyed the stream. I hope that the internet held up. I think the Wi-Fi was okay, so I'm glad I got some Wi-Fi from the, uh, the showrunner. Uh, it's great. So uh, I will see you all on Twitch next week, Tuesday and Thursday, from two to, uh, from noon to 2. And then uh, next Friday, Audrey and I will be back with the Mike and Audrey show. And uh, until then, you all take care of each other. Think about what you put in the world, make it a better place. And uh, Barahe, we'll see you later. Bye, everybody. Good to see, I mean, Brian, I wish you could have made it. Uh, we miss you. All right, bye, everybody.